Emmett, I have to say, I've known you a long time. I have never felt as proud of you as I did watching you with your son and your wife, welcoming your son to the Stanford community. But also, it was about how you spoke as a parent, and I want to thank you for that. Well, you're very welcome. Thank you, guys. I also have EJ sitting right here with me, so if you have questions for him, you can ask him as, as well. But, you know, uh, this this life that we live, this process of life that we live, it's funny how you begin as a son or daughter of a parent, parent or parents, and then you go through this process of life, and life just opens up these opportunities for your children. I got a chance to experience it again yesterday with EJ as he uh, committed to Stanford and signed uh, his letter of intent yesterday. And and uh, as a father now versus being a son then, uh, it is completely different uh, because uh, we spent – 17 years for EJ, trying to shape him, mold him. Uh, the same amount of time we spent with Jazz and Reagan and all of our children trying to shape and mold them uh, for opportunities such as this. And uh, yesterday was, was a proud moment for our family. Uh, EJ, E, this for EJ. EJ, talk about the process, man. It's um, I, I remember, I don't know, if maybe two, three years ago, we were talking about being a complete running back and now – uh, you've chosen Stanford. Uh, the whole process of making the decision. I saw you finally got to eat. You got your appetite back. Uh, how how was it? Um, you know, the process was very long. Um, you know, it was very difficult for me to pick what school to go to um, because, you know, it's a four-year decision, not a four-year decision. And, um, you know, with that, I chose Stanford because of, just the business aspect of it and, you know, the football program and what it has um, for me. But, EJ, let, let's just get right down to brass tacks and Susie Schuster in for Rich Eisen on the show here. It's Stanford. I mean, it's the best school in the country. What was it like for you to hear and to say out loud, I'm going to Stanford? That's that's not normal. You know, it, it's crazy because I came from a school that – um, helped with learning differences, and no one really believed that I would be in this position. And, you know, just to be in this position is a blessing because not everybody has a chance to go to this school, especially a kid that went to a school that I went to. Amen. I, I, I have to ask you, you know, I saw the other hats sitting up there, <laughs> and, you know, I, I heard what you said about your son going to Stanford, and if, you know, your son picking Stanford, but if it was, I want to know if you'd have said the same thing, if it was <laughs> one of those other SEC schools, uh, would it have been different if he had chosen, what was it, Georgia, a and um, Florida. Mm -hmm. Ohio, yeah, yeah, it was all of those. But let me just say this, Marshall, and this is my, this is my honest answer. Uh, if you ask EJ, I did not try to sway him one way or the other. Um, and w what I've learned is, a parent love for their child has to extend beyond my limitations, and I have to humble myself in the process to allow our children to fly. I cannot hold them back under my own reins and try to keep them uh, not necessarily just safe, but try to do something selfish for myself or or something that I believe um, that I want my kids to follow. I want my kids to follow the best parts of me, and I want them to get rid of the worst parts of me to make it the best part of them. If he would have chosen another school, I told him the other day, it doesn't matter. You're my son, and you will be my son forever. And I'm going to love you regardless. I just want you to be happy, and I want you to go and pursue your dreams, and I want you to just become the best person that you possibly can be, period, no matter what school it was. I was going to be behind him, and I think my wife was going to be behind him as well. I know we were all going to be behind him, but we just wanted the best for him. That's it. And it doesn't hurt that it happens to be one of the best schools in the country. Did David Shaw come and do a house call? How does that work? Tell me how that rolls. When he, Who comes into your house? Well, uh, we, we've had all the coaches come to the houses. Uh, we had Georgia coach, Coach McGee came in, <clears throat> Coach Knox from Florida, along with Dan Mullen and, and some other Florida Gators as well. We had Jimbo, 
uh, in the house. Uh, Coach Shaw and Coach Coach uh, um, Gould came in along with uh, uh, Coach, DeVita. Coach DeVita came in. They all came to the house. Everybody. And the hard thing is, uh, is forging a relationship with these guys over the last two and a half, three years. When you're speaking with them on the phone and so forth, and when you visit with them on the college, and then they come into your house, you get a chance to embrace them like family. And then all of a sudden, you have to pick one. <laughs> it's not an easy process. And uh, it's a stressful process because as a young 17-year-old child who think that they know exactly what they want to do, and sometimes you, make an emo- you want to make an emotional decision, but then once the emotion fades away, and, 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 and you start to think about the things that you're, you're actually about to do, it becomes very stressful. So I understand exactly what my son was dealing with. And um, I'm just proud of the simple fact that he was able to quiet the noise and settle his spirit and find a place that I believe is right for him. EJ, what are you looking forward to most about your freshman year at Stanford? Honestly, just the people that they surround me with, um, you know, just the students. Um, I'm not too worried about the my teammates because we are going to grow a great relationship. Just but being able to meet just all kinds of people from around the world is going to be interesting to me. They might want to meet your dad too. There's that. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't get in the way. Oh, oh, I- I- Emmett, Emmett will be there. No uh, doubt about it. Em- the problem with Emmett though is he's not a friendly, effusive kind of guy. <laughs> He had the biggest smile on his face, so that kind of gets in the way. For more of The Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.